Hello and welcome to the Cheadle Churches blog for Tuesday the 31st of March. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Phil Burrows and I'm an army chaplain currently working from home like everyone else. As a result, I belong to two churches, St Albans outside Swindon, which is my military church family, and when I'm home, here in Cheadle Parish. Do please remember the military and their families in your prayers alongside NHS staff, emergency services and other key workers, as we're on standby to support the civil authorities. Many have already deployed, leaving behind families and loved ones. So, if you're ready, I'm following the Cheadle Parish Lent readings, and today we are reflecting on the transfiguration of Jesus from Luke chapter 9, and starting at verse 28. Luke chapter 9 and verses 28 to 36. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendour, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfilment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. The Word of the Lord. I don't know whether you've ever faced a situation that you were dreading, even though you knew it was the right thing to do. It requires a special kind of courage. I'm talking about tough decisions or actions. Maybe it's dealing with a difficult family member who you know will kick off. Or perhaps you're self-employed or run your own business where you have to lay people off work and you know what it will mean to their personal circumstances. Or maybe it's speaking up to the boss behind closed doors about a situation that needs changing and only you can do it. It requires moral courage. Sometimes it feels easier to duck the issue altogether and to hope it goes away. But with the encouragement of close friends or colleagues, you find the strength to act. Well, it must have been exactly how Jesus felt too. Remember, he is fully human as well as fully God. As a young adult, he grew in wisdom and stature. His concerns, not so much doubts, are to make sure that he had understood his calling aright. Such was the enormity of the task ahead. Imagine the courage it would take for Jesus to be obedient even to death on a cross. Come with me as we accompany Jesus and this inner circle of disciples, Peter, John and James, up onto a mountain to pray. It is good to get apart to spend time with the Lord. Jesus has set his face for Jerusalem, knowing full well what would happen to him. We're approaching Holy Week and the events that led up to his death by crucifixion, a most cruel form of execution, even by Roman standards. You can almost hear his thoughts. Have I read the scriptures correctly? Is this my father's will for the redemption of the whole of God's creation? Could I be mistaken? Am I the one to die as the sin bearer for the whole world? I would want my closest companions with me as I wrestled in prayer, but as usual they dozed off, 
Even the disciples can be an encouragement to us. And then Jesus' countenance changed, and his clothes became as bright as lightning. Moses and Elijah appeared in glorious splendor, and they're talking with Jesus about his departure, his exodus, which he was about to bring to fulfillment in Jerusalem. I can't imagine greater assurance. Jesus facing certain death and separation from God because of our sins. And Moses and Elijah turn up in glorious splendor. The kingdom of God breaking in. God is a God of the living and not of the dead. Moses and Elijah reminding Jesus of that first exodus, soon to be celebrated in a Passover meal with his disciples. The lamb that was slain, the blood shed and sprinkled on the household so that the angel of death would pass over. Escape from slavery. All a foretype of what God has planned from the beginning of time or before the beginning of time. Fulfilled in Christ's death on the cross. And God wants to assure us too through his word in scripture. There is no death in God's kingdom, but an eternity in God's presence. Moses represents the law, and Elijah represents the prophets. Do you remember in Luke 24, verse 27 onwards, that beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to those on the road to Emmaus what was said in all of the scriptures concerning himself. Jesus is the one. Those with Jesus came round from their sleep in time to witness the event and to witness the glory of Jesus, but clearly not to make sense of it. And then the cloud of God's presence striking fear and the voice of God himself, just as with John the Baptist at the start of Jesus' public ministry. This is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. Come on, son. You can do this. You've not made a mistake. This is your call. You are my chosen. Let's finish the job. So how does this apply? Simply that it is in Jesus that God's kingdom is made known and we should listen to him. Firstly, we find ourselves in the midst of a global pandemic. Literally hundreds of thousands will die as a result of COVID-19, and we will all know people whose lives have been touched by this, even if we have not suffered personal tragedy ourselves. In these challenging days, the old adage to look up to the Lord, not just around at our circumstances, is profound. It will take courage for us to act for love of neighbour in the face of daunting circumstances and we will only do this as we allow the Lord himself to assure and encourage us. Secondly, the transfiguration of Jesus was not only an encouragement to him to fulfil his mission, but it points us to Christ alone as our Saviour and Lord. As believers, we can trust that Jesus is our eternal security. When we are fully awake like those early disciples, we will see Jesus in all his glory and we will be made like him. As the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, now we see but a poor reflection, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully even as I am fully known. As the Heavenly Father encouraged Jesus, in the quiet of our hearts, let us allow God's Spirit to breathe quiet assurance and peace and to encourage us to all that he has called us to be and to do. Let us pray. First of all, a prayer for ourselves which you can echo in your own hearts. Unshakable God, you are my ever-present help in times of trouble. 
amidst all the isolation, grief and fear we see around us. Renew in me your peace. Reveal to me your presence. And restore to me your eternal perspective through Jesus Christ our Lord. Dear loving Heavenly Father, in these times, when all the familiar things we rely on instead of you are being stripped away, we pray for renewal for the church, which is your body, and for our nation to truly turn back to you. Help us to trust you, to turn to you, to obey your call, and to see you in your glory. Amen. And finally, a prayer for everyone who is working so tirelessly for the benefit of all, and especially for those most vulnerable. Lord, watch over all who are responding in the fight against this pandemic. And today especially, we include all members of the armed forces in our prayers. Give each one of us courage in the difficult decisions and choices we face. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you all.